Good morning, insiders. How are you guys today? Today I have a, I have a very special guest. Uh, before we go to meet her, I'd like to start with the title. The title today is, How did a simple restaurant owner make it big, and I mean real big, in the corporate world of Thailand real estate? After being naive and gullible for many years, trying many things, today's guest said she's had enough and decided to cut her own part in life. Naravati Waravanicha, or I call her Pinui, is the Vice President of CP Land Public Company Limited which is the property arm of CP Group. Her primary responsibility is looking after hotels and investments for the corporation. So, Pinui, it's great to have you here today. Good morning. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? That's a very difficult question, you know, to talk about myself, but uh, I'll give it a try. Uh, <laughs> I'm 49 years old, female, um, born down south, and raised most of my times, uh, including getting you know um, university education from Thammasat University in Bangkok. And uh, you know after graduated, I went overseas um, in Japan and in uh, in England. So you know I gather some survival information, uh, survival skills uh, from being uh, abroad. Then came back and started working for most of the um, adult life with the CP group. And that's about it. Quite plain. So All you right. got to make my life interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh, what area or scope of work do you, do you handle at CP? Um, um, as you rightly you know, introduced in the beginning, in hotel and investment and for investment you know because we're a property company we uh, develop condominium for sales we invested in hotel and uh, we invested in shopping complex also office for rent okay um let's let's go back to your earlier life tell us a little bit about your early life before like before you went to Tamasad or Anything you want to share about uh, your growing up? Oh, sure. I cried a lot before going to uh, elementary school. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is that too early? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So, um, uh, did you get bullied or what? Or why, why did you cry a lot? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like. Once in a while, I got bullied, um, but uh, growing up, um, you know, I, I think I'm a little bit different from other kids in the in the sense that my mom owns a general store, so you know, um, I after school I need I have a task to come back and help, uh, you know, selling stuff in convenience store that my mom owns. So you know, it's a hard life. <laughs> and then, and then before before CP Group, I I run some restaurants um, under Subway Restaurant, you know the franchise sandwich um, from the U.S. And you know I started with one restaurant, and uh, now I think we have about nine or ten restaurants. Wow! Before we get into the the restaurant. Um could you share, like, um, you shared to me once, right, that you, you had a working experience in Nepal. What what happened there in Nepal? Um, it's, it's not like a working experience, but it's more like an investment experience, you know. Um, I, I went to Nepal for a, a trekking trip. Uh, didn't have any intention in mind to uh, start a business in Nepal. Um, but, you know, I... I I became very fond of Nepal. Um, you know, I, I saw how the Nepalese live with so little, but they, they look, they, or they seem to me so content with life, with happiness. So, you know, I, I went back there and uh, I, I wanted to, to, to test myself. You know, I, I saw how hotels or guest houses there are run so badly. You know, it does. 
um, the room rate that they got is very cheap, so they the business owner there doesn't have money enough to reinvest. So I thought, you know, I can do better. I can provide better service to the tourists there. So, and I want to try to see, you know, our forefather came to Thailand, you know, um, from uh, say from from China with with, you know, with nothing. nothing. So I want to to see if I can do the same. If I can. I want this to repeat the experience of uh, you know how you how you can make something happen from ground up. And, uh, yeah. Hotel this is always something I want always wanted to, to do. Providing wow. this to other people, so I just I just do it you know before I die. So what, what I'm getting is you went to Nepal, mm -hmm. um, you fell in love with the place, the country, the environment. The people there, and then you started to you 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 start you open a hotel there itself. Yes. Wow. Hotel or a guest house or a boutique hotel. It's only 18 rooms. You know we don't uh, own the property. You know I rented um, a a rundown, very rundown hotel, and I renovated it. And I provide this service. So you you open an eight you took you took on an eighteen rooms um, uh, guest house on a lease and then you uh, renovated it and you opened it as a guest house. Yes. And this was in Kathmandu. In Kathmandu. And this was like when you were like how old? <laughs> yeah, probably five years ago or something. Oh okay. All right. And um, so this was after or before uh, Subway. This is after. After Subway, huh? Yes. Okay, then. Um, going on, so you know, you can see I lost interest with my babies. Pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> I move on to another baby. We're, 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 we're coming to Subway soon. Uh, <laughs> but, but before that, tell me um, uh, how did you get, like, what, what made you follow the passion of real estate? How did you get into real estate um, in the first place? Really, real estate itself doesn't is not at attractive to me, but you know it's more of a a challenge of you able to develop something and you know add values to it, make profit from it, and in the process you um, you you're creating something. You know, yeah, and I, I, what I sense from you, or what I keep hearing from you, is how do you create value from nothing, and that value is um, huge or tremendous, and can be provided forward to other people. I think that's where you're usually coming from. Mm, that may be sound a little bit too holy, um, but you know, basically, you, you can say, you know, I I like to give, I like to make people feel good. I like to uh, be to get my hand dirty in making something, and I like to see that you know. Um, I like to see that prof profitability is the indicator of of my success. So you know, it's not like you know. I want. It's not that I my heart is cold and I want to do charity. You know, yeah, I, 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 let's let's uh, talk about that in uh, for a moment. Like people think that uh, some of the people have a context that doing business is bad or evil. I, I don't think that's the case. I think uh, proper good proper business setup uh, actually creates a value, and the value is shown in the reflection of the money that comes back to the enterprise as a reflection of the acknowledgement that the community gives to the enterprise. So. I think business uh, as a context is valuable too. It's not like it's not dependent. If you're if you're an NGO, you're depending on outside influence to to you, do your performance. But right. as a business, you grow, but you're offering value, and that's reflected in the profit and the money you're making. Yeah. So to me, it's a fair exchange. Believe it or not, you know when I was. Smaller when I was helping my mom in the her convenience store, 
I I hate it. I loaded, you know, making profit from other people that, you know, I never thought that one day I could be a business person. But, you know, through the through through the years, you know, I, I can see that, you know, um, taking money or making profit not doesn't necessarily uh, bad if you ensure you have the the um, ability or the responsibility to ensure that the transaction between your goods and service that you provide in exchange for money is a fair, a fair exchange, and that's I think you know profit. If you get it from a fair exchange, it's good. You know you can use the money to create many things. Yeah, I, I hear that uh, when money is earned honestly by you, you feel you feel fulfilled. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's a fair exchange for your contribution to other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think the uh, the the uh, the hard work that you work your your mom taught you at the convenience store, right? Yeah. Comes uh, is carried on in who you are in your personality. Even you even though you're the owner of uh, Subway itself. I mm -hmm. see. I, I saw you then chugging away with the Coke dispensing machine, providing it to the customers. Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Like, tell me, how, how did you get into a uh, Subway, uh, Subway restaurant franchise? Um, basically, you know, it's something that I always wanted to do, but you know, I have fear of doing business with cash on cash basis. You know, selling food. I never, you know, sell sell food in my life. So you know. I like the products. I like to get over overcome my fear of you know starting some you know a business. So I do it. I did it. Wow. So um, another thing I, I hear from you is like whatever the challenge challenges are, whatever you're uncomfortable with, you just confront it to overcome your own fear, right? Yes. And what what did that do for you? Like what what did it bring out in you, or what experience did you have with that? Another eight nine subway shops, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, so so you keep having more babies. <laughs> correct. All right. So uh, when when you were when you were operating the subway the subways babies, <laughs> uh, what was did any particular user person persistently keep showing up? Um, I you know with food business you know um, you know aside from uh, saying a joke that I have eight nice more restaurants, but I think you know you I learned the system of how to run. You know, professionally, a and B outlet, um, and I learned that you know, customers, customer service or customer mind, you cannot buy, you cannot hire. It must be, it must come from your heart. You know, um, this is um, an experience or a lesson I learned from hiring many many staff in the in the restaurants that you can train them anything. Many things, but you cannot train them service mind. Something that you know, it's like an something that you. It's more like a personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, so uh, let, let's get into that for a moment. So we cannot pretend to make um, a customer like we cannot pretend to make. Uh, oh, we are doing this, and the customer will trust us or be happy with us. There has to be an authenticity in that, right? It has to come from really who you are. Yeah. Uh, how did you how how did you manage to uh, bring that up so that uh, the customers can see it's as real for for them? That's what I told you. You cannot train. You know, even though how many times you you, you tell your staff that you know. Um, you should try to go out of your way to provide service for a customer, even though he's not buying you anything. But if he came, a tourist came in and said, "How do I get to a BTS station?" Instead of pointing your finger to that direction, he came out from your behind the counter. You show, you lead him to the door. You show him the way. You even walk a few, walk a few steps further to make sure that he's going at the right direction. That's you know you cannot train people to 
do like that. You must be able. I mean, you must be. You know, you must be uh, wanting to to help someone from your heart to be able to to do like that. You know, most of the people would just say, "Go there, go left, go right, go out, turn left." But no one would. Maybe I cannot say no one, but maybe one in uh, 50 person would come out from the counter, you know, leave what they do, and go out to uh, out of their way. Or you know, you you cannot train someone to be sensitive to customer needs. They um, uh, they order food from you, they sit down, you give them one napkin. And then they spill something, and you see that they already used the, the napkin they've got. Nobody would have the sensitivity to say, "Here's a, another napkin for you." No one. I cannot. Again, I cannot say no. Let me one in one hundred do that. But it's for me. It's it's just like it's a it's a common sense for me. Yeah. yeah. So it comes naturally to you. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes when that comes naturally to you and the other person, uh, like um, other people don't do it, sometimes it's uh, it's heartbreaking also, right? Heart rendering. Like uh, you have an expectation and it 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 doesn't. It's not natural for them. Um, in the beginning, you just uh, feel like you know um, why 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 can't they think like me? But you know, after a while, you you learn that you know people have. Different personalities, not no no human being uh, thing. So just learn to put, I guess, back to put the right man on the right job. And if you can perform 80% of the functions required, it's already good. Don't expect someone to be just like you. Could, could, uh, could you share with me a, a real experience of uh, how you transferred uh, what you experienced? Like, uh, this is the way. The customer should be served um, to to your staff, and they got it, and they they fulfill it with their own with their own um, wanting to fulfill it. Um, I try many ways, show by example, but these kind of things are not pattern. You no know, human behavior are not pattern. Things that happen in your life is not pattern. So it's difficult to train someone, as I said, to be sensitive to customer needs. You can train pretty much you know, the procedure of okay, this is what you say when you come. You have been to Seven Eleven. Swadika, good morning. Kapunka, thank you. Goodbye. You know, these are the pattern. Uh, yeah. But no real, real, but no real authenticity. You mean? Maybe not. <laughs> That's what, right. I, what I, I meant. You know. Okay, and uh, can you share with me a? a um, a uh, real situation where I, you, you, you manage to uh, have the staff be real and authentic with the customer. I guess I, I didn't succeed on that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's still an ongoing venture. It's a, still an ongoing discovery, right? How how do I how do I so how do I? Once in a while, when you find that diamond in the rough. You got to motivate them, and you know, try the best or your hardest to redeem them. You don't want uh, to. I I sense a, a profound commitment to to be of service to other human beings, huh? and and that takes that takes a um, like a lot of uh, crappiness or like I'll say sorry the word bullshit out of the way. Like guys, come on. This is not. We are just not doing it for the money. We are doing it so that the customers um, get the value that we are of service to them. Yeah. yeah. But you know, um, you you can say that that we, you you know when you when you think that you do that to make other people happy, but you know most of the time we forgot to 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 say that in doing that we make ourselves happy. So it's a selfish pursuit. Uh -huh. In yeah. Sense, you know, I'm I'm happy to be the giver, but you know, many times I have to remind myself when I'm giving something, when I get help from someone, I need to um, to let 
to accept that help, you know, um, without um, resistance. And I need to be happy. I need to train myself to be happy getting assistance as much as I give assistance. We, you bring up a very powerful point. Like uh, many of us don't. We are afraid to ask for help because then we feel inferior to other people. But mm -hmm. in you opening up and uh, allowing other people to help you, it really it, it it actually allows them to be fulfilled that they can serve you also. Correct. And and it also allows you to say, hey, I'm just a human being, and it's I'm just I, I can be humble. That other people can help me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you you um, just now you bring up another point that was really um. I, I couldn't pinpoint on it just now. Uh, Wait, is, this, is this about moral or is it about business? <laughs> I think it's. I think we. we I. I think we are um, going. We are, we are bringing. We are. We are bringing. Um, what do you call? Um, we are bringing um, Zen into the world of business. Huh? <laughs> 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 Anyways. Um, Second so, so uh, I then I, I I didn't see you for two years, and suddenly I met you on the road one day, and I asked you like, uh, hey, like, what are you up to these days? And you say, hey, I'm already a, a, a vice president of CP Land, and I got shocked. What? What? I didn't meet you for two years. What happened to you? How did uh, you get into that? Um, basically, you know, I came back to the old old company, my old boss. Um, one day I went to him to. Uh, it's his birthday or, or New Year, you know, just uh, the same once a year visit. Um, and he said, oh, why don't you come and, you know, join join the company? And so I said, oh, okay, why not? You know, I made, I knew I made it into the small corporate, uh, small business world, so why not try my hand in a big corporation to see if I can succeed? Okay. And um, as a uh, corporate ladder, uh, I mean, uh, ladder. tell me in your experience what's the difference between the two worlds, like the corporate world and the small business owner world? Um, the the big business world, I think you have more of a redundancy, the bureaucrat bureaucratic um, system. But you know, you don't need to yield to that. You could bring a small business owner mind into a big business corporation, and I think it works pretty well. You know, you when you think of something, you think as if you are the owner of that money, of that investment, of that project. But when you actually work, you have to work as if you are a, a staff, an employee, meaning work your ass off. <laughs> Uh, you're worth the money, you're worth the salary. But when you think, you must think like a the owner. All right. So what I'm hearing is you bring um, you bring the both you bring both worlds together. You bring the world of entrepreneurship, where you have to be innovative, you have to uh, be nimble, be quick, mm -hmm. and also uh, then you have to also represent your 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 corporation in a way that it it um, it brings honor to the corporation. And also, you have to work your ass off in a like. Okay, I'm also the staff. I I, I need to get things done. I need to get things uh, moving. Yeah. 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 So. Every month, I think. Okay, my salary is this. Am I making the profit much and much more to the company than my you, staff than my team? I, so, so you're saying. So you're saying, are you are you creating a value that's worth they are paying you for? Correct. Am I worth it? If not, you know, I had better resign. Wow, you're very, you're very, um, you're very dis, very straight, very disciplined with yourself. Huh? Yes, and my staff. You know, whatever I command from myself, I command from my staff. I'm not command demand. T tell me if I, if like for example, um, if you don't do it that way, what's the impact of that? If I don't make myself work. Yeah, if you if you don't be disciplined to yourself, if you don't uh, live up to your own values, what what would be like? What would be the impact of that? I was just wasting my time and my my employer's time. You know, replacing me could be somebody else that can do better. 
So why don't give up the opportunity to others? Okay, great. So you, you, you I think if there's uh, something to be learned from here is that your your performance is the reflection of um, like why they're paying you for the value you're, you're being paid for, right? So people don't operate that way. People usually operate like, okay, I'm sitting here, I'm getting the money, I'm getting my job done, and that's it. They don't link performance to why they're being paid for. I think people link performance to what they paid for, but usually they will tell themselves, I get paid X amount, so I only should work X amount. Ah, and, and the difference with you and that is? I don't think like that. I think that if I get paid X amount, I need to work X plus plus. <laughs> like the buffet in the morning, <laughs> America. <laughs> 999 plus plus. <laughs> Otherwise, why hire me, right? If I don't create profit or I, if I don't create, uh, you know, uh, excess value to the company. Um, it also brings back to the question you were you were talking about earlier, right? That um, it's actually a selfish endeavor because when I serve others in myself, I get I get fulfilled. So it's a, a selfish endeavor, mm -hmm. but an endeavor that, that actually fulfills you. Yeah. If you don't do that for yourself, right? Is mm -hmm. there an impact on your experience to yourself? Yes, I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy if I don't. If I don't, you know, if I don't create values, if I don't do, if I don't feel like myself is doing company any uh, any good, I I can't sleep. <laughs> you are really one 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 awesome woman. No. Oh, <laughs> okay, so let's get into um, to the work you're doing at uh, CP Land. Your mm -hmm. scope of work is hotels and investment, right? Right. Tell, tell, tell me the scope of work and what do you actually handle there? Um, for hotels. Actually, well, actually, tell me first what 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 uh, brands or like what hotels or what are you uh, what is under your what is under your responsibility? Okay. What are the things? Um, CP Land Company Public Company Limited. Uh, Currently, we own one 400 rooms hotel on Rajadhar Pasek Road under uh, uh, the brand name of Grand Royal Fortune in Bangkok, and we just took over a five-star hotel in Nakhon Phanom. This is a 122 hotel, and uh, we rent now. We under uh, we renovating it, and we also make. Um, constructing, start to construct two hotels, one in Nakhon, Sri Thamarat. I don't know if that's where you came from or not. <laughs> no, I, I was born in Korat. <laughs> then 344 key in uh, Nakhon, Sri Thamarat. And then 149 key in Chiang Kong, Chiang Rai. So altogether about um, 1,000 room hotel that um, I'm looking after, but I don't look after it in a day-to-day -day operation. I look after it from an investment point of view, um, site selection, and this is the same for condominiums that we are developing and selling in uh, almost 20 provinces uh, in Thailand. I look after a team that do site survey, site selection, site procurement, then we send that to you know, a architect team to construct, and then I look after the end process, which is selling, marketing, selling, and transferring. So that's that's a lot of looking after. <laughs> yeah. but I have. So. Okay, um, you bring up a you bring up a, a very good point um, about. T tell me, I, I'm I'm gullible, or you can say I'm I'm new at this. Tell me the difference between looking after it uh, from the point of view of uh, operations and from the point of view of uh, investments. Like, what's the mindset or what's the thought process that's different? Right. 
Well, in real estate, I, I think you heard, you know, uh, numerous times before, location, location, location. Yeah. And that's true. Um, but also, you know, you will need to look at opportunities at the competitors. You need to analyze competitor strength, weakness, your, your own strength and weakness. Um, and you look at, you know, you're going, you're going to go into one location. Are there already, you know, many competitors that are fighting over the same place? If you found that, you know, even though the location is great, I don't advise that you go in. You know, you've got to find a place where there's a niche demand. Nobody can do it better than you. You go in and you develop something, and for sure it will be so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've I've worked with you before, um, uh, and I saw you like I I asked you about the. I actually had uh, you consulted me when when I was buying a restaurant in Skumit before. I remember that you had a different mindset in looking at things like you said. Okay, is this a walking? Is this a walking street? Like people walk today. Are they pedestrians or you can say Skumit, but Skumit uh, itself doesn't mean that. Uh, there's readily customers for you. There are other factors you can, uh, to to uh, comes into determining it. And I didn't get. I got that there was a different thought process there, but I I didn't get into uh, how how you're creating results from that thought process. But it already opened me up to something new. And I think you bring that also to to the current uh, position of your like. I see CP land is a huge conglomerate in Thailand, right? But right. I see a lot of a lot of investments in real estate is not in central Bangkok. Yeah, there are a couple of properties in central Bangkok, right? But there's also, as you mentioned, Nakhon Sitamara, Nakhon Phanom, and these are like huge hotels. So yeah. uh, uh, you seem to be very good at creating results where nobody's seeing it. Yeah, that's what I want to bring up. How, how do you know that? Mm, I don't want to, you know, pat myself in the back. Maybe other people see it, you know, but they probably are working in a big corporation, probably bigger than ours, and their decision process probably take longer. It's in the committee and lawyers, advisors, accountants, and guess what? Those people are not gonna say do it. Those people are gonna tell, you know, tell you don't do it. There's a risk involved. Blah 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 blah. So by the time they come to, they they need someone to make a success before they go in. But you know, I we get on different mindset. We see opportunities and we we grab it. We take it. We don't wait for other to, to you know. To take the opportunities, I I think you know we all have the same kind of uh, um, you know cleverness, uh, same kind of education. But who will make a decision and take the risk, calculated risk, faster? Okay, great. You bring you bring up another point. See, if I look at that thing, say Nakhon Si Thamarat, how? I, I don't see an opportunity there, but how do you see, uh, how, how does it show up for you as an opportunity? Because it, that takes some, some level of, um, some level of, I don't know, experience or distinction or something, but you can see it that, that's, yeah, let's go into that and let's go into that right now. Actually, it doesn't appear in my dream. I, we spot opportunities <laughs> by being there. By being the user first, you know, we, we had some business in, in, in that town, and we need to use, we need to book into hotels. Hotels always fully book, you know. What oh, oh, yeah. So you, you went down on the ground, and you were there, and then you walk around, and you actually became a user of the hotel, and then you surveyed, and most of the hotels there are fully booked. Yes. The same as Nepal. And then that I went to Nepal. I stay in shitty hotel. So I said, I can do better. You know, it's, it doesn't have, you know, you, you, you know by experience. Don't 
it's not like a uh, I just call it an inspiration. It's not like my dreams and it opens up by itself. Yes. <laughs> it's like, a, okay, now God is opening up something for you and you see it. No, no, no. You know, I don't know. I never meditate and see anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be pragmatic, it has to be real. <laughs> right? Same with Qian Kong, you know. Um, same with Qian Kong. I, we went there and we knew that we could do better, and there's a lot of, there's more. Uh, demand and supplies of rooms. So, you know, when you have this kind of situation... And it's great because uh, what I see is you have the distinctions of a business acumen and then when you go into a, some, some place you can uh, nearly readily see right away that okay this is an opportunity, uh, the hotels are booked and nobody's, it's a new market, I, uh, you, I, I'll say a virgin market and nobody has even known about it, like nobody has touched it yet, nobody has even known about it yet that um, and the big players are still doing something somewhere else, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's one very good point that other other people can take into to um, use for themselves. Can I okay. add another thing? Sure. I don't want your listeners to listen to our talks and then go out and rush to find <laughs> <laughs> and land and build something there, expecting to sell. You've got to <laughs> <laughs> opportunity, and by opportunities, I mean demand and supply. Yeah. How, how, how do you gauge that? How, how do you gauge uh, something has uh, more demand than supply? Uh, like, how do you look to know that it's that way? It must happen to yourself, you know, if you feel it, like, oh, it's so difficult to get this. Uh, so, so it shows up in your own experience. Yes, and you have to look at your you know, uh, your, your competencies, you know, if you don't like uh, providing service, you don't like to bound down to other people, then don't do a hotel, you know, you, you might, you might, but if your forte is in construction, you know, and uh, your forte is in making sure that the constructor are working to the standard, then you're probably uh, better off uh, developing shop houses for sale because then there's no after sale service that you have to do. So, you know, you, look, you have to look at many angles. You know, the competi competitive environment, your own competencies, and also the money in your pocket. You know, you have to say, I only have five million baht. What do I do? You know, if I got it wrong, and I lost all this five million, but am I going to commit suicide, or I'm going, or I'm going to, you know, go back and try to save more money and start again? So that's the risk um, assessment, your own risk appetite that you need to assess, and then you know, invest, invest according to your risk appetite. But if you say this is the, the last five million I have in my pocket, but I want to do it, you know, I've been thinking about it. And if I don't do this, and I got hit by a bus tomorrow, I'm gonna regret. Then do it. Mm hmm. Okay. Now, um, ha having gone through that process, like um, determining my competency, looking at the market, seeing in my own experience that it's uh, it is it is um, it has more demand than supply in in reality. How do I know I'm not I'm not fooling myself? Like. Uh, hey, hey, hey! Yeah, yeah. Things would things would turn up in my favor, like because usually we 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 sell to ourselves what we want to hear or what we want to think will happen. Like, yeah. how how do I separate that from uh, uh, an acute relationship to reality? I guess because I'm, I'm I'm very I'm very good at uh, dreaming up things. So you must think of the two extremes. Is, is this something I want to do to? Um, in life, you know, then if it's success, how happy I would be. Then think about the other extreme. If it fail, how miserable I would be. And if you think that, okay, I can take it, you know, if it fail and I lost everything, I can take it. Then do it. You but you need the bright side to motivate you to do, right? So that you get up and you you um 
you, you go to work and you assistant, but you need also the very dark side to to ensure that you know that you're not doing something that this is not something you cannot take. That this is not the end of the world. Wow. <sighs> There's a chance that you might lose, but you want to be able to tell yourself, I thought about it, I knew that this is coming, this is what I already decided to do. I decided to get up and fight again. Looking into the future, right, and uh, with the possibility you, you've already created, uh, looking into the future, what possibility opens up with the level of success, the level of clout you have, the level of resources you, you have under your influence? Where, where do you see you, you're going? Like, what opens up? I, you know, um, if, I, if I have enough money, there's two things that I wanted to do. One is I want to be so selfish that I don't care about other people. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. That's the aren't power you, of money. Aren't but, you already there? <laughs> not really, not really. And the other side, I would like to make, you know, I see how, um, you know, low skill laborers suffer, you know, I see how they, they, they have to move families, living in a uh, thing, shack, uh, with, you know, like a nomad, with very uh, bad living conditions. I want to, I want to use some of my money to make sure that these people are having a human standard kind of living. Okay. So you're going to use your wealth and your resources to contribute to people who is underprivileged so mm -hmm. that they're, they're not treated as uh, something that's less than being human, right? Yes. Because you, ah. you, 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 you look at all the, you know, 30, 60 million baht houses, look at the nice hotel, and look at the people that work to do those new developments, and you see the your heart is the wrenching, you know, the heart wrench situation to look. It's like you take advantage of a of human being. Mm-hmm. So I, I see you are, you're not just disciplined, but you're quite hard on yourself. Like, okay, I have this, um, I have this value that I have to create for my uh, employers, and also if all the money that I get, I'm going to make sure that it contributes more to, to humanity. Yeah. So I, I think I am privileged today to be the one who's uh, got to interview you, and no, I didn't. I, I haven't done any of that. <laughs> I I didn't know you at this level before. Like, okay, we we, we chat and uh, you love me as a brother, but I didn't I didn't realize that this this is the level of hum human being you are. I would like also to uh, the audience to to get to know you, and if they if they would like to um, get in touch with you, ask for your advice, or would like to celebrate your your so humbling uh, experience as a human being. They can get in touch with you at uh, at uh, naravati at gmbfhotel.com, and it's uh, yes. I'll put it on the page. Please do not spam her. She's a beautiful human being. I ask again, please, 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 do not spam her. All right. <laughs> She's already. Been spam before. I'm sorry. Have any of your guests been spam before? Uh, not that I've heard of at the moment, but I, I'm just concerned about the internet world, like other people <laughs> uh, see see it and then just send I don't know what what kind of emails that's not related to to you to you. Oh. Okay, so uh, we are we're nearing the end now. I would like to ask how was this interview for you? Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to ask how was this, uh, inter like what was the experience of this interview for you? interview for me? Yeah. Fun, it uh, allowed me to be myself um, and uh, yeah, it's not like the investors interview that you know, I need to um, project myself um, as a businesswoman. I think you, 
you allow me to be to be me, and a business person. So, thank you very much. Okay, great. Would you like to? Would you like the audience to have something to remember you by? Um, like maybe, uh, uh, hey, come have a drink with me sometime when you drop in at a Fortune Hotel or Nokia Hotel or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-social. <laughs> I don't think you're anti-social. I think you're anti-wastage of time. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you know. Um, you remember me as what you want to remember. Wow, great! This is beautiful. Okay, before we end. Uh, What's the one thing you really want the audience? I think you already said it. Like, re uh, be yourself, right? Remember me as the way you want it to be remembered. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you want the audience to be left with. Like, be yourself, right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for a very um, privileged and honorable um, interview today. And I couldn't have asked for any better. Thank you. Thank you. And the audience, take care. I hope you uh, get value out of this. I think you you would get value out of this. Take care. Bye-bye.